Hello everyone and welcome back to another Life is Feudal guide. Today I'm going to be showing you how to get started the minute you log in to the MMO for the first time. This tutorial will be different depending on your player style. So if you're a solo player, this is going to benefit you more. But if you've already got a pre-arranged guild to join and a meetup point where you're going to start building your base or your forward outpost, your guild leaders will have different ideas for you. So, but you might still find some of this information helpful. First of all, what you're going to want to do is check your location on the map and go over to the right hand side of the map and click this icon here. So you want to go ahead and press that. It will bring up all of the safe green zones within the map. Now you're going to spawn in one of these four green zones when you log in for the first time on the MMO. These green zones are 100% safe, but you can't build any guild claims within the green zones. But what you can do is create something called a private claim, which I'll touch on later in this video. Now that you know about the green safe zones, it's time to take a look at what all the other tabs mean. At the top, this is going to show you all of the clan claims. So if you press that, let's open up the map a little bit more and zoom in. This is going to show you where all the clans and the land they claim. As you can see, quite a few clans here claiming a bit of land. But as the MMO, when it's live, progresses, this entire map will be full and there'll be wars raging on, people gaining land and people losing land. The next tab is for fives. You go ahead, click that and it'll bring up the grid reference here. So as you can see, it'll have the server grid here for this one square and then it'll have a three by three of fives inside. A fife is a tiny little bit of parcel of land inside the grid reference. So these are individual parcels of land you can capture. I'm not going to go too much into fifes today because if you're a new player, there'll be too much information for you. I will have that in a separate video in the future. The next tab is for wars and instant battles. So you can go ahead and press that. It's the two swords crossing over. Unfortunately, there's no instant battles currently going on. No judgment hour. So there's no red swords on the map. So if you saw two red swords lying over the top of each other, that means there'd be judgment hour and you would be able to declare war or attack that enemy. Next up is the trading post. So let's go ahead and click that. And this is going to show you all the active trading posts in the world. Now these will be player owned trading posts and they're never in the green zone. But you'll, as you can see, they're just outside the boundary of the green zone. So if you want to trade, you can go here and make some currency. Trading posts aren't uniquely placed near green zones. As you can see here, they're placed all over the map by players who want to trade. So it's a big convenience, but it also can be risk versus reward as well, as you can be ambushed by players. Next up is the guild tab. So that's this three person's head here. You want to go ahead and click that. Now, I'm not in a guild. I'm on a burner account right now, just for the sake of this tutorial. If I was a guild leader and I say I had six people in the guild, I would see all six people in the guild running around and seeing what they're up to. This is very beneficial. It's not for spying exactly, but it is good to keep tabs on where your members are, what they're up to, because spying is a big thing on this game. So it is good to know what people are doing and keeping tabs on people. This last one is probably the most important one overall. It's the one that looks like a star. What you do is press that. And this is going to bring up all of the regions in Golden Land. So what you need to do is zoom in and it's going to bring up all the icons. Every zone has something unique to it. So let's, for example, say God and Jord. Uh, this has rock salt limestone, uh, un undefined, uh, that's probably a bug. Woolly pig, mountain sheep, barley peas, amber wood, and trout and raw gems. But let's just say this one here, this will have something different. or will have something less than this. So it's good for trading and it's good for placing down personal claims in different regions. So you can harvest crops in your personal claims and get them regional resources if you find it difficult to trade. If you get lost on the map and you can't find your character, all you have to do is press this head icon at the top and it will center back on your character on the top. But if you want to try and move the map around, it will keep on snapping to you. To fix that, you just need to go ahead and press the head icon again so you can navigate around the map freely. Now that you know how to use the map, it's time to show you how to put down a personal claim and expand it. So to put your personal claim down, what I highly advise you to do is put it down where there's a wooded area within the green zone. So you want to find yourself a nice little wooded area, preferably where there's apple trees as well. I'll touch more on the apple trees in a moment. So I think this area here is quite nice. So let's go ahead and place down our personal claim here. To place down your personal claim, what you're going to have to do is look down at the floor, right click, claim private land, and then you want to place private monument. You want to go ahead and click build. 
You are going to be required to get one billet, which I'll touch on in a moment. So you go ahead and press build. So if this is not your private claim built, if you're unhappy with the location of where you want to place it, you can use the Y axis to move it around, your claim marker, or the X axis to move that around as well. So if you're happy, you can just go ahead and press build like so, and she'll start praying. So now you'll get this little sign here. This is where you're going to have to put a billet into. So to get a billet, there's a number of ways to do this. You can press O on your keyboard and this will bring up all your primitive crafting tools which are available for you to craft. So what you want to do is go to primitive axe and you're going to need one branch, one flint stone and two plant fiber. That's really simple. So what you need to do is look down at the floor and then go for look for and then materials. So you want to go ahead and look for materials. This should bring up sticks plant fiber and flint so let's have a look here as you can see the little sparkling stuff on the floor this is the items that you've discovered so let's go ahead and get this plant fiber let's grab that we've got some stones here as well you might as well grab them as well because they're going to be for slinging uh let's get them flint stones and let's have a look here get these rocks again so flint stone and stones are two different things stones is used as ammo let's go ahead and get them branches you can get branches off a tree as well which i'll demonstrate in a moment time to craft ourselves a primitive axe so you want to go ahead and press o again go down to primitive axe and click craft as you can see it's telling me the resources i've got awesome so what you want to do now is press i on the keyboard go ahead and grab your primitive axe and then press p drag it onto a slot so my character now will equip that and as you can see here i've now got an axe on my hip so we've got a birch tree here so to get the billet what you're gonna have to do is chop down the tree so you go right click and you want to cut down so let's go ahead and cut this down it might take you a couple of attempts as your skills are rather low at this point all right there's the tree chopped so what you can do is either chop your log at the point of where it's been felled or you can right click and lift object so let's go ahead and lift the object because i want to put it inside my boundary for when my claim is built what you can do now is right click and chop now you have two options here you can either do saw out a building log board or billet this is with a saw or you can chop a billet from here with an axe so let's go ahead and chop out a billet from here so once you get a billet this is what it'll look like in your inventory here let's go ahead and claim private land and drag the billet into there and then click build and there you have it you have now your private bit of land now to actually see your land what you can do is press f4 hold it down and this little parcel of land is now yours so what we want to do is go ahead and expand that to expand your monument it's really simple so what you want to do is right click on the floor and go to claim and resize you'll get this screen here so you, you can zoom right out a little bit so you can see what you're doing and now you want to expand your claim as you can see it's currently three by three i want to have this monument in the corner of my claim so I can have more land to fill out. So let's go ahead and increase its Y axis. As you can see, this green line coming out here. So what you want to do is hold down Y and drag it out. Right or left, whatever's best for you. And now the X axis, let's go ahead and make that like that. Let's just go a simple five by five, I guess. So let's go three, four, five five okay there we go let's we're gonna have a little five by five and then what you want to do is click claim and you'll start praying again it'll see as you can see here where it says in system chat you have successfully changed the claim size the additional land will be yours tomorrow so it takes one in-game data tick for you to get your new land size so what you want to do is press f4 you can see your current size this little three by three but as you can see you can see your future claim size so when we grow the, the claim it's going to be this big instead of three by three it's going to be five by five but they can go up to a significant size don't worry they can go a lot bigger there is one thing to take note of though if you right click your monument one thing you will have to take note of anything outside of your private monument can be interacted with other players i can't put anything in this new area here until the next game tick because another player will be able to come and pick it up so you want to keep everything within the actual area so no one can steal it next up is the seasons. The seasons are very important in Life is Feudal, the MMO, as these are what dictate to you when you're gonna have food and the best time to harvest. So if you go ahead and press K on the keyboard, this is gonna give you your calendar. So as you can see, the 18th of June tells you when the sun sets, it tells you what crops are seeding, so domestic wheat, domestic rye, etc. And you can also gather domestic wheat, domestic rye, etc. on this day. But let's move through the days. As you can see, 
The harvest day for animals is different on the 19th of June compared to the 18th of June. You can't just pluck apples and hazelnuts whenever you like off the bushes like you can do in Life is Feudal your own. The MMO is vastly more intricate than the standalone version. If you struggle with getting hazelnuts and apples early game, I highly recommend you to go fishing. To do that, you're going to need a fishing rod. So what you need to do is press O on your keyboard and go to your primitive fishing pole and craft one from here just by clicking craft exactly the same way as you did the primitive axe. So once you've crafted one, you can go ahead and place it on your back. It only can fit on your back slots, the fishing pole. It can't fit on your hip at all. So once you've done that, you need to go and find yourself a body of water. Every body of water has fish in it. So to fish, what you've got to do is right click on the water, walk into it a little bit, and then click fish. What you want to do is press I on your keyboard, and then sort your items, and your fish will start going in your inventory. You're not guaranteed to catch a fish every cast, but it is quite easy and a good way of getting food early game. As you can see, we've got a pike there. We've got a couple of sardines. Now it's time to craft ourselves a fire. Let's go ahead and place this here. Right click on the floor. Go to create and click create a campfire. To do this, you just want to click campfire and build. This doesn't have to be on the flat surface. So you just want to go ahead and click build. And then you want to right click on the little signpost and click campfire. You're going to be required five branches to make this campfire. So let's go ahead and drag five branches into there and click build again. Now that you've got your campfire built, if you're the gatherer for your friends or your clan or whatever, I'd always recommend if you're doing fishing, have one or two campfires laid out next to the water and have these cooking your fish while you're fishing. So you can just keep on stockpiling huge amounts of fish. So you can just take them back to your group of friends or your guild at the end of your fishing expedition. I'd also recommend having a log nearby so you can keep on fueling the fires with billets. Okay, so to actually cook food, what you're going to need to do is right click the campfire and click add some fuel. So you want to go to your inventory, grab your billets and place them in there and click light on. There we go. You're now ready to start cooking. So to actually cook food, what you need to do is right click on the fire again and click prepare. And what you want to do is go down to fried fish. As you can see here, you've got your fish in your inventory and you've got branches here. I've only got three branches, but I've got six fish, so I'll be able to make three fried fish. So let's go ahead and mass produce these. Once your fish dishes are getting completed, this is what it'll look like in the inventory. So that's my fried fish done. To turn your fire off, what you need to do is right click and go to add some fuel and then left click on extinguish and turn your fire out. If you haven't got anything to cook, you just don't want to be wasting resources by burning your fuel. Now, what you can do is you can just right click on your fish in the inventory if you're hungry and then go to eat and I'll just eat one at a time. Don't worry, it won't consume the whole lot. As you can see, my hunger bar jumped up quite significantly. Now a brief introduction to setting up the UI. This is crucial because this can save your life. So what you need to do is to bring up the UI editing interface is press F10. And this is going to bring up all of the your highlighted items that you can move around on your screen. So what you want to do is bring up your system menu away from your chat. So what you want to do is go ahead and, and drag that onto there. So this is how it will roughly look for you. So what you want to do is go ahead and click off all of the other rooms, unless you want to keep them, but it will make your life easier. So what you want to keep is golden land. So this is global chat, your local chat and your system. So what you need to do is drag your system away from your chat and it'll create a new box like so and you want to put that there the reason why you want to do that is because you want to keep a tab on the points you're getting and how your skills are increasing and you also want to keep an eye on local chat this is so you can talk to other players within your vicinity or if you want to talk to a trader somebody you're trading with if they don't have like a voice comms or whatever next up what you want to do is have your health stamina and hunger right in front of you so as i've got set up yeah, for you, it will be set over here. So what you want to do is just drag them. Yeah, I always have these sitting on top of my skill bar here. So for all my items and the abilities that I'm currently using. Next up is your buffs and debuffs. Your effects are definitely want to be at the top of the screen. They definitely want to be in your eyesight because you want to know what kind of buffs you've got all the time and debuffs. So you definitely want these at the top of the screen. Next is your character's body. Now you want this in eye shot as well, because if you're in a PVP fight, your wounds will be shown on here and you can easily identify your wounds and you can ask somebody to heal you 
and you can tell them where you're wounded. Next up is your alignment. You want to definitely have this just off in the corner somewhere. It doesn't really matter how big this is. You can just keep an eye on your alignment. Now, if you go around killing people in the open world, just mercilessly, your alignment will go down. Next up is the map. This is definitely something you want to have open as well, mostly when you're out adventuring around as you want to keep tabs on, well, your location. But when you're in your base, you can just easily hide this, which is by pressing X. You can also press this little icon here and you can make the opacity a little bit dimmer. But in the top right corner also is the calendar, so you can press that. But there's also a hotkey key you can press to bring that up. All you got to do is just move that up into the corner or wherever you want to place it and then you can keep tabs on whatever you're doing. If you don't end up locking your UI items, this will happen. So what I'll do is press F10 and there's a little padlock here. You want to make sure these are locked on all of your items. So let's go and press that and I'm going to unlock it. And now I'm going to press tab to go back to my regular screen. See how everything disappeared? What you want to do is press F10 again and then click the padlock so it locks. Then you can press tab again and it will keep the item there for you. And lastly, you have A and group. A is when you're swimming. I normally just have this off to the side, the same with the alignment. A little ball up here when you're running out of oxygen, basically. You want to keep that pretty much on your screen, along with your group. Now, this is very important. If you're in a group of, with your friends or you're in a big instant battle and stuff like this, this is where your group screen will appear around here. So you definitely want to have that saved and locked on the side of your screen. If you're happy with that layout, what you can do is just press escape, go to your settings and you can go to controls and you can scroll Roll all the way down to the bottom and you can save your hood preset. That concludes this tutorial. If you're a new player, I really do hope this helped you to get started in Life as Feudal MMO for the launch. If you did find this video helpful, consider leaving a like on the video. It does really help out the channel. Thanks for watching. As always, guys, if you do enjoy my content, consider subscribing to the channel as well. Let me know down in the comments what you want to see as my next Life as Feudal guide. And thanks for watching.